In this section, we're going to talk about Apache Web Server administration. We're going to cover remote administration, monitoring your performance, authentication methods, logging, and finally I'm going to do a demonstration of remote administration. Now remote administration is frequently performed on the Apache Web Server. Some issues with remote administration include authenticating securely, encrypting your sessions, and logging your remote sessions. Now what does this mean? Well, authentication means that you want to make sure that uh, the people that log into your Apache Web Server are indeed who they say they are. Encrypting your sessions means that you will make sure that all of your traffic going back and forth from you to the web server itself is encrypted so that it can't be sniffed or remotely spoofed. Finally, you also want to log your remote sessions so that if somebody is logging in, whether they are legitimate or not, you want to know what's going on. You want to know what times they're logging in and out so that you can keep a track of the things that are going on on your web server in case you do have any problems. Some traditional methods of remote administration are the Telnet, R login, and the other R services. They're called that because they generally start with the letter R. These are insecure methods. They don't provide strong authentication. They don't provide session encryption, meaning all traffic is sent in clear text, including passwords. Clear text is just a fancy way of saying text that is readable by a human being. You can see exactly what it says, no encryption. These are easy to intercept, especially if there's a person that's skilled in hacking. They, they can get this uh, information pretty easily. The best methods of administering your Apache Web Server remotely are using SSH and WebMem. Both have advantages and disadvantages, and both have security strengths and their own separate issues. SSH and OpenSSH are considered strong, the stronger methods if the updated versions are used. However, WebMem provides a nicely integrated GUI, or graphical user interface. Now if you choose to go with the SSH method, version 2 is the most secure. It replaces the insecure protocols such as Telnet, FTP, and the R services. It allows administrators to access secure shells for a remote administration, meaning that you are, your traffic is encrypted, your authentication is secure. It comes with a secure version of FTP and remote file copy. SSH or OpenSSH is included with almost every version of Linux or Unix. It can also be downloaded for Windows-based clients and servers. It provides for strong, secure authentication using protocols and session encryption. And it can provide mutual authentication services, meaning that you authenticate to the server and vice versa. WebMint is a graphical-based interface using web server, not as preferred as SSH. It uses server certificates and SSL protocols to secure the admin session. So rather than relying on strong protocols like SSH, it uses server certificates. It can be configured to use host OS security mechanisms, meaning the file permissions, etc., based on the server itself. And it uses username and password authentication. Let's talk about performance monitoring. Performance monitoring on Apache is a product of several different things you should know about. The first is server hardware, which means the disk space, the RAM, the CPU, etc. Your operating system tuning, and your web server and application tuning. There are several methods to monitor and tune all aspects of your Apache web server. There are some built-in Unix Linux commands some built-in Apache utilities, and finally some application-specific tools. Some built-in Unix or Linux commands that you need to know about include the PS command, which monitors your processes, the VM stat command, which can provide information about the memory, the paging, CPU time, etc. 
Some things you need to know on Apache is the mod underscore status module, which provides info on the server activity and performance. You can then monitor your server statistics using an HTML page. This would be http colon slash slash, then your address, which in this case would be www.myserver.com forward slash server dash status. Now to your applications. MySQL and PHP, for example, have the capabilities to monitor and tune the, their respective performance. MySQL Monitor, for example, can enable performance monitoring on its databases. Furthermore, PHP requires advanced coding techniques to tune its performance. Monitoring and troubleshooting can be done at command line. And I encourage you to look into the better ways that you can tune your performance and monitor it. Keep a close eye and make sure you're doing an efficient and easy to use database web system. Let's go into further detail about authentication methods. Authentication refers to identifying and verifying user access to your server. Users can have access to all, some, or none of the site, depending upon the authentication method and the permissions in place on your website. HTTP authentication uses two types. Basic authentication is the lowest form of security, using a username and password combination sent in clear text. Digest authentication provides for encryption of said username and password. The preferred authentication method uses the secure sockets layer, SSL, usually over port 443. It involves using a server certificate for authentication of the server to the client, but it can be used for mutual authentication as well. Furthermore, SSL can be used to transmit information over a secure channel or session set up by a certificate exchange between the server and the client. These SSL and server certificates are set up using the mod underscore SSL module, OpenSSL, and the OpenSSL command line tool. Other authentication methods include restricting by the hostname, the IP address, or another factor that is passed on to the server. The mod underscore access module can control server access by the host or IP address. The allow and deny and order allow deny directives configure the mod access. Let's talk about a topic that you should pay close attention to, and that is logging. Apache has built-in logging capabilities, and these allow an administrator to monitor the performance of a server, the security of the server, and other issues within the Apache web server itself. By default, Apache provides two log files. These are the access underscore log file, which contains information about all requests served up by the server, and the error underscore log file, which logs information on the errors and the system events that are present on the server. The log format directive determines what details of the HTTP requests are logged. These use either of the two most common log formats, the custom log format and the combined log format. And logs can be sent to a file or a database. Some modules also provide for their own error logging to separate files by default. Module-specific capabilities and files are present. You should research each individual module documentation for further information about the specific module logging capabilities. In this section, I'm going to show you briefly a demonstration of one of the most important administration features I feel in the Apache web server, and that is the administration of the logs. So I'm going to switch over here to my terminal window, and first I'm going to show you the location in the master file for the Apache web server, and that is the HTTPD dot conf file, the location of the information for logs where you need to be focusing. So I'm going to do a more on that file. 
You'll notice this is the Apache HTTP server configuration file, the most important file, if you will, in Apache Web Server. And I'm just going to move down here through all this interesting information to the Section 2. Now, this is on the Mac OS X operating system, the demonstration I'm showing you right now, so your mileage may vary depending on the version of Apache that you happen to be running. But on my particular system, it is located in Section 2, the main server configuration. Okay, so this section shows you, beginning with the error log section, shows you what you can do with logging. Now why is logging important? The logging features built into Apache allow you to log the things that are going on when your server is accessed, be it from a authorized or unauthorized user. Remember that many, many attacks come from unsuspecting users, as many if not more than people that are intentionally trying to hack your system. So what logging does is it allows you to have a snapshot or a playlist of the things that are going on in your system. So it even allows you to keep up with things maybe if you want to tune the efficiency of your web server. Logs are great and you need to study them daily if you can. The error log section here allows you to specify the location of the error log file, your log level, and then the following directives which allow you to define how your logs are going to turn out. You can make custom logs, customize them to your heart's content. And down here you'll notice if you prefer a single log file with the access agent or referrer information, so some very cool stuff there and I highly, highly encourage you to check this feature out in Apache. Make your logs, customize them how you want to get the information that you need. And I'm just going to show you briefly also what the folder looks like on the Mac operating system that has the different log files just so you'll know the amount the massive amount of logs that you have available to you as an administrator. So I'm just going to do an ls on the folder which is, in my case, slash private slash var slash log. Look at all these logs. These are not all Apache logs. These are system logs, different logs that, that the Mac operating system has available to it. But just to give you an idea of the massive amount of logs that a administrator has to look at. Now, this is good and bad. A lot of logs means a lot of time spent looking through them, but it also means a lot of information at your fingertips if you have an incident or just a malconfiguration that you want to check out, see if you can get things right. So I encourage you again to know your logs, love them, check them daily, and configure them in a way that makes sense to you and gives you the information that you need.